I definitely knew that I didn't want to work for large publishing companies again. I could see too many occasions on which I felt they were more focused on the organization and less focused on the individual authors. I decided, partly because on my dad's side of the family there were a number of folks who owned their own businesses, that I should start a publishing company. And so I did. There was a, a real gap in social science publishing, particularly academic publishing, not just books, but journals. And at that point, it was almost like I could see the light bulb going on over my head. And one of my political science professors, Marilyn Jacobs Gattel, became the editor of the first Sage Journal, which we now know as Urban Affairs Review. And nine months later, Urban Affairs Quarterly was in print, and it grew, and so did Sage. The social sciences are definitely a very significant part of what Sage is all about, but it's no longer the only part. It's more a matter of being concerned about social justice, about environmental justice, about economic justice, about the, the issues that surround things like freedom of the press, or looking towards the future, who owns knowledge and how is it to be used and continue to be used for the public good. Our relationships with the librarian community began when Sage was very, very small. And I used to regularly attend various library meetings, including the Special Libraries Association, where I had many friends. So in terms of philanthropy with librarians, it was a kind of outgrowth of not just obviously the publisher-library relationship that is at the heart of scholarly and academic publishing, but also it was a natural part of our response to giving back to the university communities. I certainly have seen waves and waves of what I have chosen to call through all my career merger mania. But another part of the change that has come with growth is that Sage has felt strongly about giving back. And so our philanthropic activities have grown alongside of the company's growth. It's a great part of corporate culture. And it's, it's really important, not just to the managers, but also to our staff members. All of my colleagues are very, very proud of the things we've done. The estate plan was developed to keep the company independent as long as it does not lose money for two years in a row. But the company is meant to be independent, and so I've set up an independent group of trustees for the Sage stock, and currently those trustees are outside the company, outside the family, have been selected because they have knowledge of the company, they're on the board, they've served on the board for a long time. They will replenish themselves over time by voting. It also includes the Royal Society of Medicine. And when I think back to the fact that in 1990 we didn't publish any medical journals at all, the fact that they chose us as the publishers of their 28 journals is truly fantastic, but it also contributes to making us the fourth largest publisher of medical journals in the world. And I'm very, very pleased to be able to say that. The fact that we were able, from early, early days, to have a relationship with libraries in Israel and retailers, including the bookstore at Hebrew University. I remember visiting them a long time ago 
and saying, well, you need to carry more of our publications, and they did. Um, and, and distributors like Telden, I, you know, it's, it's just been amazing. And all along, we have had wonderful authors in Israel as well. But what I learned with SAGE and with SAGE London and then when we established SAGE Asia Pacific, was it six, seven years ago, is that knowledge knows no borders. And that's one of the things that has been the greatest teaching in my life in having started Sage Publications because I've lived that. I've learned that by living that. Thank you.